Hello everybody, welcome to another True Review. I'm of course True, your Million Gene Gamer, and this is The Deep Ones on the Xbox One. It releases on the 11th of April, priced at £3.99, and is by the powerhouse publisher at the moment who are releasing games like they're going out of fashion, Sometimes You, and this one's developed by Burp Games, which is a fantastic name for a development studio. So let's have a look at the description and the features of Deep Ones. Deep Ones is a retro arcade platformer with multi-genre parts inspired by ZX Spectrum and works of HP Lovecraft. The main protagonist of the story suffers a crash on his submarine. The Great Red Octopus is the reason for this. His will of destroying every traveller that he encounters may seem unbeatable, but Diver isn't exactly as simple as he looks. He is encouraged to walk along the bottom of the ocean, plunge into the depths of the darkest corners to rip and tear through the thick plants of the seaweed and fight with the most unknown creatures of the world that is beneath just to get his submarine back in his command. On his path he will witness many beautiful landscapes of scenery and will acquire many trustworthy allies, all of which will also enrich his stories that will be worthy of telling about. That is of course if you'll be able to help him survive and triumph over evil. Features Compelling and philosophical storyline, unusual visual presentation of the game inspired by ZX Spectrum, classic arcade gameplay, different genre entries, for example, shoot em up genre will make its way into the game at a certain point. So I'm really glad the description there made reference to the ZX Spectrum because when I immediately booted the game up, it brought back memories. Now I, the ZX Spectrum was the my childhood computer. It uh, occupied me for many an hour as a child in the 80s and it's still a fantastic machine to this day, probably one of the best home computers ever ever made in my opinion. And the graphical style was is pretty much um, like, a, I would say it's like a super spectrum because spectrum games had only a limited color palette, I think it only could display, I only could have nine colors uh, to choose from. I mean, you think today we have millions of colours that can be depicted on the screen. It had nine, I think, or was it eight? I can't quite remember now, but it didn't have many, put it that way. And it also had the notorious problem of if it placed one colour over another, it had this thing called colour clash and it didn't work very well. So most Spectrum games were presented in a style called monochrome, which was basically a colour was chosen from the palette and the other colour was black. And they were basically black and white, or black and yellow, black and purple, black and blue. You know, some of them, some of them games chose very hideous colours <laughs> to to use, if I'm honest with you. But that required that gave uh, the Spectrum games a higher level of detail over its contemporaries at the time, which uh, made it, um, you know, graphically look very good, but also uh, very odd because there was just two colours on screen the majority of the of, of the time in the majority of games. So Deep Ones really replicates that really well, but kind of um, eliminates the colour clash issues that the Spectrum had. And it would be what it would be kind of like what every Spectrum fan wished the Spectrum could do if it didn't have colour clash. So you get nicely drawn graphics. They're very like kind of like they're kind of like wireframe in a way. They're just just basically lines. They they lack detail in the graphics, but they they do depict everything that they need to depict well. Like you can tell it's a shipwreck. You can tell there's rock formations, bones, etc. And it, it, I think it's done to a really good really good standard. And and if it's set out to replicate the ZX Spectrum, it's a triumph in my book. So we've covered the graphics kind of already there. So we'll move on to the sound straight away. Sound is nothing really much to write home about. You've got the uh, the bleeping of your of your gun firing, and um, the the jump sound effect is uh, is not annoying, which is great because you're doing a lot of jumping. 
Let's move on to sound and music now. Well, sound effects wise, there's nothing to really write home about. The main sounds you're going to be hearing are the jumping sound, which is pleasantly not annoying despite the amount of times you do jump in the game. And the other sound that you will commonly hear is the sound of the gun firing, which is like, again a Sax Factory, you know, 8 bit gun sound, which anybody who's played 8 bit machines would have probably grown to love. It doesn't rewrite the wheel, but what can you do? It's a, it's a, it's a gun firing at the end of the day. What is most annoying though with the sound effects is, is this fish, I don't even know the name of it. It's a giant fish with a, kind of an antennae sticking out of its head, like a single kind of an antennae, and it lets the most obnoxious noise possible. Thankfully you only do encounter this fish about four times during the game, but honestly my ears never want to hear that sound again. Very, you know, a terrible sound, a horrible sound it is. And I suppose it really conveys the terror that this fish tries to convey on you when you first encounter it. Uh, obviously subsequent encounters with it are less terrifying because you realise it is pretty easy to kill. Turning to the music, the music I really loved in this game, it changes from scene to scene which is fantastic in my opinion because if there's a track you don't like, it doesn't outstay its welcome. And some of the tracks do convey this feeling of isolation because you are end of the day like a thousand leagues under the sea isolated from your ship not another human you know in miles you've you've trapped in a very dark bleak hostile uh, environment but some of the musical tracks are very very well put together they the the, the, the small in the build up and then they kind of like uh, convey that sense of, of dread and isolation and darkness because it will I can imagine it'd be very dark underneath the water especially when you're that that deep down as well and the other other tracks as well like saying action sequences when you're being chased on the, on a seahorse for example do set the tempo at the correct pace as well and you feel like you've been chased by something that can obviously do you great harm and it adds to of attention brilliantly so the composer of the music and I know this is a very limited team have done a bang up job with this this is the one area where obviously the ZX Spectrum reference does fall down because the, the ZX Spectrum whilst uh, capable of some really nice tunes was never capable of anything of this level and it's the only thing that really does take you out of the, uh, the ZX Spectrum vibe uh, with, with the game if I'm honest with you but nevertheless I think it was a wise decision to do that because the tracks that, have been, that we have been given are really top order ones so moving on to gameplay then well it plays great in my opinion it has a few technical issues but they don't detract from the game, they may result in a few frustrating deaths but nothing too much that will detract from the overall game. Now it's been getting a bit of flack over on, on True Achievements this, um, this game, not, I've seen a few comments where a lot of people haven't liked it on my on my True Achievements feed and it's a bit of a shame really, I think it all depends on what genre of gaming you came from. Like I say, if you brought it with a ZX Spectrum, this replicates a ZX Spectrum platform really really well where you had to do pixel perfect jumping, you had to jump right on the edge of, of ledges to, to do jumps etc it was slow it was methodical it's probably a little bit clunky but that's by design it's designed to imitate the spectrum there but it, it plays it, it, it plays well to replicate the feel of a spectrum game I immediately thought of a game called booty on the spectrum where you, you, you was a, you was a, um, a bosun on a I think it was a bosun anyway anyway he was, or a cabin boy even I think it was a cabin boy you were a cabin boy on a pirate ship and you had to collect treasure and jump over platforms and things such as that it immediately reminded me of that game for some bizarre reason it just popped straight into my head as soon as I uh, was playing the first level of the game um, and it, it play it plays great. It plays great. You you jump platforms. You avoid enemies. There's even a stealth section later on in the game where they, they use um, depth of background where there's um, there's uh, rocks you can hide behind and have to stealth past um, certain uh, certain creatures that uh, are in one of the uh, in, in the creatures lair at the at near the end of the game, which is fantastic that they've actually managed to incorporate that genre. And I'm surprised they didn't mention that genre in their description. They only mentioned the shoot 'em up section, which is a, it's supposed to be a very very brief section where you're on a pirate ship and you have to destroy incoming pirate boats. And it's a pretty poor section to be honest with you. So quite why they chose to say mention that over the stealth section. I, I, I don't quite understand 
but the game will take you through a lot of locations I think it's probably about 30 scenes in total firstly dodging like plant life and basic fish like puffer fish is these electric electrified um, fish which I, I don't know the name of uh, it will take you over stingrays or manta rays that you have to jump on as moving platforms it will take you over uh, bones and carcasses of uh, creatures use even some treasure at one point which the game criminally rips away from you just as you think you're going to get rich <laughs> but then the, the main body of the game uh, probably the second third of the game is made up by the pirates and the pirates are probably the most plentiful enemy in the game you'll be doing a lot of killing of pirates with uh, with the gun or harpoon gun I think it will probably be now uh, the pirates come in a number of varieties there's ones with swords there's ones with muskets there's these big massive guys and these annoying these annoying guys with hooks that run towards you and um, follow you all over the place and there's also dynamite throwing um, pirates as well and they're all well they're all great enemies they're all do different stuff and require different tactics to actually you know actually you know beat and and uh, adapt to especially when there's more than one in your line of fire as well because you may be dodging a sword attack while bullets are flying at you and dynamite's exploding all around you as well but the problem comes with they're, they're too plentiful they they stagnate the game a little bit in these sections they just seem never ending and these sections can become a little bit of a, a bit of a chore and you're thinking where the hell's the end and you just wait we just want to get to that next checkpoint so you don't have to replay a section over and over again but um, this pirate section is where the game's three bosses present themselves and it's all the one boss basically so this pirate captain who you have to beat on three occasions and the boss battles represent a massive massive difficulty spike in the game it's still nothing I would say is, is too hard but after a few you know a few um, tries and a, a bit of practice but they do you know the difficulty spike is very very noticeable in sections because there's always like one attack of the of the, each of the bosses which uh, requires you to dodge it at least a good proportion of the time just so you have enough cycles in the boss to actually you know do the required damage to it but uh, they are probably the game's hardest, hardest points there once we get through the pirate ship, we do have the pirate ship shoot 'em up section, as I mentioned. There's a few chases on seahorses where you have to escape a shark and have to escape pursuing pirates as well, which uh, add a little bit of flavour to the game. And then we go into the creatures lair, which makes up the final third of the game, where there's that stealth section which I mentioned, which is kind of uh, a refreshing, a refreshing little section of, of the game there. Uh, which finally leads to a chase escape from the octopus as well which started this whole um, story off in the first place and results in a very very surprise ending which I won't actually uh, spoil for you guys so overall I really love this game it with these sometimes new games they're so cheap in price the the the, the rating of sale kind of goes out the window because they're so cheap to buy this either it's either a disaster or it's a buy this game from the description set out to replicate a ZX Spectrum game and for that purpose the game's a success it succeeds on all fronts there the graphical style is what everybody wanted a Spectrum game to look like and do and it feels like a Spectrum game and from somebody who's played hundreds of thousands of Spectrum games, I can hand on heart say this feels like a modern Spectrum game, a refined Spectrum game, a Spectrum game that we wish the Spectrum could could produce without its lim with its limitations removed and it, it's a success on that front, definitely a success. There's a few little glitches with it, there's a problem with the gun firing sometimes, sometimes you jump and it won't fire, other times you jump and it will fire, so that's a little bit of an issue there, but other than that there's not really any any problems at all with it. it it works perfectly fine and as i say this set out to make a replicate a zx spectrum game and it's done so to a high standard and it's very very enjoyable this is obviously going to be subjective because if you haven't come from a zx spectrum genre uh, you know uh, genre of gaming and you wasn't brought up in that era you may be coming at it if you came like from a 16-bit area or started gaming in 32 bits or beyond you're going to be thinking wow this is very very basic and this is total trash blah 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 blah, blah. but no this this is honestly this is honestly good and and achieves everything the game tend to set out to do so for that reason this is getting a wholehearted buy from me 
definitely definitely worth your 3.99 i would definitely recommend this and i've even i've even forgot to mention the achievements on this one the achievements on it are, uh, are challenging but easy enough to get and does re do require about um you know a few partial playthroughs as well to get one achievement where you have to kill the, s the first boss three times but other than that very easy thousand gamer score so i'll reiterate that again definite definite buy from me i hope this company burp uh, games do another tribute to the ZX Spectrum. I'll definitely be interested in looking at that because they've done a stellar job with this one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the review, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next review.